Hello everyone and welcome to this session where we are going to talk about how to create an experimental culture. Uh, let's go, but first I'd like to just introduce me to you guys. Um, so this is me, hi, and also on the picture. Uh, my name is uh, Marianne Stjernvall, with a really hard Swedish surname to pronounce. Um, I work at TUI, uh, the travel agency, uh, and I work there uh, as a CRO and UX lead for TUI Nordics, but I'm also a CRO manager for TUI Group. So some small fun facts about me. Uh, I worked within the field of CRO, uh, especially for six years. Uh, I have a bachelor in data and system science. Uh, over these years, I've been working with over 30 plus organizations and executed uh, more than 500 A-B tests. And on the side note, I do love data and puzzles. Uh, if you do have any questions about that, feel free to, to comment or ask me afterwards. Um, but uh, let's get on it to this session. Uh, so through the years, I've been working with so many different organizations and I've been handling like all from just executing an A-B test to implementing uh, new structures for working with CRO. Uh, and I preached about doing data-driven decisions without that gut feeling. Uh, so in this presentation, I'll, I'll show you the six steps uh, to build an experimental culture, uh, which is the vision we, we ultimately have. The reason for the order uh, of these six steps are is specific um, because you can't just jump the steps uh, and expect the same outcome. <laughs> I do know that because I've done it myself. So this is built like on that test and learn approach that we like and based on what I've learned through the years uh, and by doing my own mistakes of jumping each uh, steps before I knew about that right uh, combination. Now I'm really pleased to be able to share that with you guys. So uh, let's do it. Six steps to get your experimental culture running. Okay, so number one, be the hero. And what do I mean by that? So let's go back to the beginning here because like no pressure, right? So about three years ago, I started at uh, Two in Nordic as a CRO manager. Uh, and the team, you might wonder, well, I was actually the only one working with CRO in the Nordics. Uh, by this time. So coming in, I knew I'd always wanted to drive that like data-driven way of developing for, for the web and for the users. So I kind of knew what I had to do when I got in here. The velocity of tests. I needed to do like as many tests as possible uh, in order to get as many insights as possible, right? So I knew the more data I had, uh, the better I could prove my point, basically. And that was by doing a lot of tests. Um, and by doing that, I would also need a lot of buy-in from stakeholders. Uh, that means that they would need to learn about CRO and that I would be the one to teach them. But one thing you need to know when coming into, especially a new organization, maybe they haven't worked that much with CRO, is that not everyone will like you. Basically, you have to understand that if you're a CRO specialist somewhere, you are not the most well-liked person. Basically, you're not liked at all. Uh, and you need to know that. You, you go in and you change someone's code, you change someone's UX, uh, you change the whole site that other people have been working so hard on, uh, and you need to get them on your side, basically, and work with them and get them to understand what CRO actually is. And it's not changing their works, it's listening to the users. So I needed to understand how they worked, uh, and I needed to 
attend a lot of meetings uh, a lot, as much as possible, really, to just sit and listen to what they were talking about, understanding the issues. And when they were talking about it in that room, I could basically say, let's test that. And I could understand and I can explain how, how we could do that. Uh, and there are kind of two ways to do this. On the one hand, I needed to let the stakeholders test whatever they wanted, no matter how bad the hypothesis was. And believe me, there have been some bad ones. Um, so the stakeholder or the hippo or whatever you might call them. Um, but I'd rather give them an insight to why that test didn't work in the end. Because, you know, then I could actually test it for them and provide the insights to why it didn't work. And then together we can create an even better hypothesis after that. And they will kind of also get the hang on, on how it works. Because, you know, you always say like, you learn much better if you do the mistakes yourself. So you cannot go in as a CRO specialist with like a mindset of a know-it-all. You really have to put yourself in the stakeholders' shoes and try it out with them and explain it along the way. Uh, by doing that, you're actually turning this point around a bit from what was said in the beginning, be the hero. I don't actually mean that you should be the hero. What I mean is that you should let the stakeholders be the hero. Um, this is what you want to achieve. And what you want to achieve by that is that people will come up to you and say, like, you know, I was in this meeting the other day and we argued for a lot of the time about these filters or whatever and how they should react. And then I said, let's test that. And now you, you have created like some buzz about this and you are giving them results. Uh, and it doesn't matter if they're losers or winner or whatever or inconclusive. What you actually win is showing what you have learned. And this is where you will shine uh, with those insights that you will bring to the company because people want to understand why stuff is happening and you will be the one to have the answers. Saying that, they will have to come to you to get the answers even if they can be the heroes. Okay? Let's jump to the second one, the masterclass. So... Now you have created a group of stakeholders who have bought your experimental approach and they love it. Of course, why wouldn't they, right? Uh, but now it's time to take the advantage of this and the bus, really, to wider audience, hence the masterclass. Uh, at TUI, um, we have masterclasses um, about like everything. If you're in sales or if you're in trading or whatever you're working with, basically we have a masterclass for it because we want people in-house to be able to learn about everything your colleagues actually are doing. Uh, so I've put up four CRO. I put up two masterclasses every six months. Um, but basically, what if you don't have this already in your organization, that's totally fine. Because what a masterclass really is, it's an invitation, it's a room, it's people, and it's you. And I mean, during these times, you can even do it online to like bringing that to the people as well. Uh, I usually keep the masterclasses at about two to three hours. Not too long to let people fall asleep. Uh, but it's also a complex subject. But I mean, this is your time to shine and make people as passionate uh, about the data-driven ways of working as you are. So uh, keep it inspirational. Uh, name dropping helps. <laughs> it really does. And talk about how you actually like perform a test, you know. Show the value you're getting out of it. Show what you've done on your side already. Or... Like this example, even better, show how others are doing it. Like name drop those organizations such as Netflix or Google or Booking.com and Facebook. Because like in the end, we're all like triggered by it. So do that <laughs> because it really, really works. Um, you are now creating like bigger awareness and keep that momentum going. What I mean here is that keep the masterclasses going to spread that knowledge to a wider audience because you are getting new people in there from new departments uh, all around. 
and it won't always be a full house uh, and it doesn't need to be. It takes longer for some uh, to get to that masterclass and you can't expect everyone around the organizations to be as quick on the ball and as those who work like really close to you. As I, as I said, I usually have like three to four masterclasses per year. This way you're always top of mind and everyone can attend at some point. Uh, so, I mean, you have your close stakeholders and people have started talking about this around the organization now and uh, that's exactly where you want to be, to have that smaller group who are really, really interested, but also this wider bus because CRO and the terms that come with it, you, you want the organization to be aware of it. And also, really important is that to keep it light and fun, uh, we have the luxury with this experiment that it is really inspirational and it's easy to show off. Keep it that way within the masterclasses uh, because this isn't really the time nor audience to go into those deep, deep details as we can do uh, so easily, okay? With that said, um, let's move over to the results. This is a bit of a tricky subject and it's what they need you for, basically. Uh, so here it's time to build that closer relationship with the people who are really your closest stakeholders. The UX department, the developers, the product owners, the one who are closest to you. Think about who those are. I have done this in a few different steps, okay? First one is the direct stakeholder meetings. In the beginning, when you are starting to get results, set up a meeting as soon as you have the analysis. And don't just show them the end numbers, uh, but build that storyline of how you came up with the test. The data before, and then drill down into the details. Start speaking about significance, power, the cumulative curves you are using to determine when the test is finished. Teach them about the details and make time to encourage questions, really. And if they do have questions about specifics, because they will, as we talked about before, like each one have like their close darlings, it might be like, okay, so if, if this change uh, was this good, are people still clicking on this card, which is very close to me, like they always have their darling area. So be open to that and dig into the data right then and there. So show them how much data there is and that you can answer their questions on the spot because you're that good at what you're doing. So keep it as like a working meeting, okay? Now that they know a lot more detail, Bring the world of CRO up and open it up to them. So open up your roadmap in Trello or Jira or wherever you have it and be transparent with what's going on. Uh, also bring the results and documentation together in one place so that it's easy to reach for all stakeholders. That way you can easily share like a link or so and they can also see all the other results that you have in there because now they are eager to see what else there is, right? So on TUI, we uh, use uh, Trello right now as a backlog and we have a documentation in Atlassian, uh, which is basically just all the presentations we've ever done. So there are like years of A-B tests in there, which is so good and so much fun. And even like when new people start, they can just dig into that because it's all there, okay. Over to the next step then. In time dashboards. If you have the possibility and if you think that your stakeholders are ready, also invite them to take part of the dashboard so that they can follow the test that and how it's performing. But I would really suggest you wait with this until the right time. Um, you know, like opening up results that say like, oh, this converts 20% better after like two days might make them jump on it, you know? I'm sure you've been there, so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, be sure that you are around to answer to why this test is actually not finished yet. Never stop teaching and explaining and always do it with love because you do love what you do. 
and we will never stop actually teaching about this. Uh, and when you have done that, I mean, you have a lot of people on board now that actually knows a lot about CRO and let this take its time, this step. I mean, this is maybe one point in a presentation now, but it, I think it took a year for me basically to get to this when people were actually ready for the next step. Okay. So step number four, this is what I learned this week. Uh, this is the name of the meeting me and my team has. We invite sta all stakeholders to it as well. Uh, but we have it um, every week. Well, since it's weekly. Uh, the whole idea is basically a total rip-off. Uh, thank you, Luke Roblevsky uh, from Google. Uh, I actually attended a, a talk with him and he said that he and his team has this meeting every week. And I really love the idea. So, so what is it? Okay, so welcome to, uh, this is what I learned this week, user focus. So basically, uh, you send out this invitation to people and I send it out to my team, but also other stakeholders or people who might be interested and people also ask to if they can be part of it, such as product owners and so on. Then we have like a board on the side where you can write your name up if you have something that you want to show. And then different people uh, actually moderates the meeting every week. Uh, so that way they don't have to hear my voice all the time. <laughs> okay, so in this meeting, uh, it's very straightforward, I would say. Usually we start off with showing an overview of all the results from the A-B test we've done the analysis for through the week. This is a great chance for everyone to get those insights as well, uh, even if they aren't a part of that exact product team or that exact test. And then the floor basically after that is open. So people can show whatever they have worked on from service in Hotyard, user test results, new funnels being built, uh, and new behavior analysis to understand, basically. The point of this meeting is that it's user focused. So everything you talk about has to be user focused, but it's also people focused, right? Because this is also time for the people who are working with this data, with the users, to shine. It's, it's their time to actually show off. What did I do this week? Um, what great work or fun findings have I actually done? And let them show that off. And the applause are also really important to applaud everyone and cheer them on. After these meetings uh, that we have on Fridays, uh, it's the perfect time for you to send out your experiments weekly newsletter uh, where you can give updates on what has been pushed live, uh, which tests are still live since the last time, and which tests are done and which are analyzed. And I promise you, like the list of people who are asking to get this newsletter, it grows so fast. Uh, it's crazy, actually. And you know when you send out like a newsletter to a lot of people and you get like no responses? For me, I get responses almost every time. Someone wants to dig further into something or has a question or a comment. And I think that's pretty great. So uh, there is this place and need for us to share the results and the learnings from the tests we do. Uh, and that also leads us on to tip number five, actually. Uh, the CRO Showcase. So the CRO Showcase uh, is an event that happens every month. Uh, it's a place to share the tests that have been executed in the previous month to a wider audience and simplify it a bit as well. So here you can invite everyone uh, in all parts of the organization to show all the test results um, you have from the previous month and all the insights that you have gained. Uh, this is also a place for questions and for people who might not know Zero that well because everyone might not be that involved in CRO, but everyone is interested in what's going on on the web. Because that is basically the store that you do have. So we actually grew the showcase. The showcase has been around at TUI for quite some time, but at first it was simply the CRO showcase, as I have explained, uh, that we had in TUI Nordics. But now, it's actually called the CRO Global Showcase. 
uh, and it has changed. Now the people talking about the test are people all over the TUI markets working with CRO, and everyone shows like two to three tests that have that have given them the greatest learnings and that the other markets can learn from. So we have people from all over, from UK, Germany, Nordics, Belgium, France, uh, to fly into hotels and other services we're actually also working with. So here everyone can learn from another and we can, we can get to know our optimization program on a global scale, I would say. Uh, but that's a bit of another story, I'll save that for later. When, when you have this monthly widespread setup, uh, and don't forget to like invite top management to this as well, uh, then it's the perfect time to wrap up with the sixth and last tip to grow your experimental culture. The monthly dashboard. After the CRO showcase every month, you have a great opportunity to spread this knowledge around because let's face it, if you invite all top management on board, not everyone will be able to join, which they should, of course, still have all the good stuff that you went through that day, right? So it's a perfect time for you to send out an email with a link to a documentation place where you have gathered all the tests you guys went through on the showcase and also to perhaps make a nice dashboard with all the data that you now have gathered, like how many tests uh, were done this month in each market's uh, perhaps you have your core metrics that you can share, such as margin attribution or whatever you guys have. Uh, put it all in there. I know this slide really sucks because I can't show you guys like any of the numbers, but anyway, imagine it's yours. Um, what we also have to spice it up a bit is that we have something called the monthly winning test. So out of all the tests that has now been shown, you call out one of them as the winner. And this is the perfect way of showing what can and perhaps should be tested next in all of the other markets. And also it adds that sense of competition as well, uh, which is really good. So now we've gone through these steps of creating that experimental culture, which is basically all about spreading your passion for what you love, but in a more structured way. Um, then you might see something big and, and a change in culture. And I think there's no better way than what I saw in the Nordics about a year ago. Uh, so, you know, these like town hall talks that your board or CEO has. Uh, so often they stand there and they push these value words that really brings the culture to the organization. And so does uh, ours, of course. Uh, he always takes them up. We have them. There are um, togetherness, trust, transparency, and fun. And now about a year ago, he added a fifth one. Test and learn. After the first time he actually told us about this new uh, value word, he came up to me afterwards and he said, he smiled and he said, you're really happy now, aren't you? <laughs> Truth? Like, yeah, happiest ever, you know? That's like the best proof I, I could ever have gotten, I think, that this actually succeeded. And an even better proof that this actually works is that I'm not alone anymore. I have my team now, you know? Thank you so much. Thank you for listening in. And... Uh, I hope I'll speak to all of you very soon. Bye.